Hello. Welcome to Cluj. Welcome to <laughs> Cinema Arta, a new and uh, an old <laughs> cinema at the same time. Uh, I'm uh, Miki Braniste, um, <coughs> cultural manager and curator. I uh, work for uh, Ton Dimash Festival for for uh, 10 years. I don't know, uh, maybe some of you surely know about this festival, but um, uh, I will briefly introduce it. Um, it started in 2002 in France as an initiative of uh, art television, and then it developed uh, at European scale. And uh, the main purpose was to uh, develop interdisciplinary projects uh, where the image, the video image and the photo image um, have a, a dramaturgical role in the uh, performing arts. And uh, we started uh, with, uh, in Romania with uh, this, um, interest to the form more and uh, I try to uh, together with the team of the festival to uh, give a local dimension for this festival and to respond to the urgencies of the local scene and uh, uh, step by step we transform our uh, interest from the form to the content and uh, this is how uh, our um, festival get more and more political let's say. Uh, but after uh, 10 uh, um, editions, um, we realized that uh, even if we already proved that uh, we can do a good festival, there is no place for uh, uh, the development, the further development of it. And um, uh, the fragility of the project was the same as at the beginning. But in fact, at the beginning, it was not that fragile because we had three years uh, of uh, European funding. And uh, after these three years, we continued the project uh, without this funding, with uh, local funds and national funds. But um, yeah, uh, 10 years of work was, were not enough in order to, uh, to have a stability for the project. Um, and this is also the place, the festival was the place where uh, the performing arts scene in Romania could be seen uh, by uh, international programmers, uh, together with Yulia Popovic, uh, curator and the critical theater from Bucharest, we developed in the frame of the festival a project called um, the um, Romanian Platform of Independent uh, uh, Performing Arts. And, uh, there was the place where you could see the most interesting uh, performances in Romania. Um, so coming back on uh, the um, uh, specificities of the performing arts scene in Romania, uh, we, um, together with Yulia, um, wanted to uh, emphasize the um, new direction, let's say, uh, embraced by uh, the younger generation um, of uh, theater directors and also uh, contemporary dance practitioners that were um, reflecting on uh, the society and what is happening around us and also uh, globally, not only locally. And uh, um, this support towards these artists also engage a new generation after this. Um, first names as uh, Janina Carbonaro, let's say, or, or uh, David Schwartz or uh, uh, Bogdan Georgescu. And now I'm very happy that uh, uh, in between uh, Vava and uh, Kingo, that, that I will present <laughs> a little bit later, sorry, I started <laughs> directly like this. Um, there is Petro Ionescu, uh, representative of a uh, young space called Reactor, and uh, she uh, um, is part of the new generation that I'm very happy that exists and can continue the work started uh, in the 2000s, at the beginning of 2000. Um, I think, just to make a little uh, um, reference to history, uh, the independent scene started in Romania uh, at the mid-90s with some uh, small initiatives um, in contemporary dance and theater. Um, but at year 2000, there was a major uh, project called MAD, uh, managed by Vava and um, Mihai Mihalcea. 
um, that lasted three years. It was um, a joint venture with... Uh, I will talk. talk about this, okay. And then uh, this was before the most important founder of the independent scene, uh, the AFECENE, um, the National uh, Cultural Fund, that appeared in 2004, no, 2005. Five. Um, so 14 years ago, and um, in all these 14 years, their funds uh, succeeded to develop a scene. Um, but I think in our opinion, uh, develop is not enough. Uh, now, after 14 years, these people who started at that moment uh, are in a moment of their professional life that uh, they need to pass to another level, and there is no other level for the moment. Um, mm, I don't know exactly what, oh yeah, about um, uh, the moment situation. Um, there are a lot of uh, initiatives, more or less volatile. Um, the duration of a life of a project is around three years, let's say, and uh, some of us are happy that uh, lasted more than three years. And um, uh, again, some of us can see a future, some of us cannot see a future in our uh, professional life um, due to the um, local or also uh, um, global movements, uh, global situation. Um, what it's uh, maybe new for us because we just are more and more aware of it is the fact that uh, one of our important needs like the space became to be uh, very threatened but this is also the case in France for example I know about uh, uh, Man d'oeuvre who had a big problem with the mayor um, Cluj is more and more a gentrified city and uh, um, together with Kingo, uh, we started 10 years ago this uh, project, and, uh, of course, together with other uh, 28 uh, persons, not only the two of us, uh, we started uh, the Paintbrush Factory project, who today uh, will still have two months of stay in the same place, and uh, from uh, the next year, they uh, will uh, move to another small venue. Um, so one of the important uh, needs for the um, uh, independent arts uh, in performing arts in Romania is the space and um, also other um, um, similar projects uh, in Bucharest have the same problem. It's uh, not only happening to us, it's a general problem and um, um, I think this is the moment for us to, to step in a new period. Maybe um, just uh, before I spoke with um, some friends here and uh, uh, Zegoz was telling us about uh, an artist that came to Cluj um, two times at least, uh, a Polish artist that uh, now it's thinking his projects without the need of a space, <laughs> without the need of lights, and um, he's trying to be more autonomous, but I'm uh, thinking for how long can we be autonomous in this way? So uh, for sure we need to, uh, to find a way to a transition, but a transition to what? And um, um, I'm, um, I'm very glad that we have this opportunity to participate in the reshape project. I think we all need to reshape our thinking, our uh, ways of uh, doing things. And uh, um, I'm, I'm really asking myself if this um, um, engine of the independent scene, which is the auto, auto exploitation, it's so embedded in ourselves, could we reshape ourselves or not? <laughs> I think this is uh, the, the success story of the paintbrush factory, in my opinion, was based on the auto-exploitation. And uh, um, it, I think not only our story, it's a general fact. But can we re reshape ourselves, <laughs> having this so deeply in our uh, way of living, in our way of, uh, of uh, thinking? 
uh, but this, we will come to this uh, question later. I would like to uh, give the phone uh, to the girls uh, <laughs> and ladies. <laughs> Uh, sorry for this uh, informal um, uh <laughs> saying. Um, so, uh, if you want to start, no, to present your project. Uh, hello, and nice to see you all here, and happy to have international events inclusion and people who have good new different energies coming from different places into our city. Uh, my name is Kinga. Uh, Kinga Kellerman. I am running uh, an organization which is called Ground Floor Group and uh, uh, it's quite old. It's uh, 15 years old and uh, it's in its current state the organization is hibernating um, and I will come to that uh, in a minute. Um, we started uh, back in 2004 uh, starting with a contact improvisation festival uh, and organizing it for eight times in eight years. Uh, it, was the, it was our idea to bring this movement form uh, to Romania. It, there was no such event in Romania and there were no festivals and there were no trainers and people and uh, practitioners of contact improvisation and it, uh, we thought it's a good opportunity to um, um, uh, ch change or, s or switch or sh shift, make a shift from, from uh, in, in especially in the acting uh, 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 teaching, uh, because actors uh, are were at that time. Uh, if I if I ge may generalize a bit uh, here in, in Romania, more rationalized uh, in in uh, in their education. So uh, uh, the body was somehow left out of this uh, and we wanted to bring that back the body to the actor um, and to the acting scene and also the dancers came. So it was a nice uh, festival which lasted uh, eight years. And um, as uh, Miki told about Tom Dimash Festival, it was this, we had the same feeling after eight years of organizing and organizing and organizing and starting and, and, uh, and um, applying for funds. Uh, to organize this festival that we are in the beginning. Like you, you have eight years, you have two international trainers, you have performances, you have uh, more, uh, more trained bodies around you, uh, but you are still in the beginning of, of lacking funds for the next year. And it was really hard to organize in this way. So we decided to stop that. Um, I also uh, run a festival which was called vis a -vis. Uh, and it was a dance festival and um, uh, it wasn't curated or if I would say it was curated by the Hungarian Ministry of Culture because I invited artists who had funds for traveling and that was a, pro uh, that was a, um, 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 a Hungarian artist dance, uh, dance and theater people and uh, that was a fund of the Ministry of Culture of Hungary for some time. They were giving funds for people to tour so I wrote a dozen of letters of invitation towards artists I was interested in and I was saying, uh, if you apply for a fund to come to Cluj, you can. <laughs> and it happened for three or four times uh, that we had uh, um, this vis-a-vis uh, -vis festival. Um, and um, uh, meantime, uh, I also produce work of uh, uh, choreographer Ferenc Schinko and uh, uh, we had uh, Together with uh, Miki and Collectiva, we had uh, um, uh, a collaboration which uh, was called Parallel, which was a really, uh, 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 I would say now, good show, uh, and which, which, was travel which traveled abroadly and in Romania at all festivals. And um, uh, it was in 2014 and 15 when we traveled, it was the most traveled show of Romania, both independent and, and uh, um, um, big theater performances included. Uh, and uh, uh, we also produced uh, other uh, performances as well. So uh, as a producer, I was touring a lot in, in the last uh, three, four years <coughs> with these shows. And um, I was also in the venture of uh, Fabrica de Pensule, that was our home for, uh, for the last 10 years. We had a studio there which we uh, um, 
constructed uh, and painted with our hands and uh, put the floor down with uh, our hands and it was like uh, uh, an old uh, historical uh, an old um, um, industrial building uh, which was I wouldn't say occupied by artists which was paid by artists uh, to the owner it was uh, you can see some pictures of them some shows at Fabrica I guess uh, soon. soon okay so um, uh, and um, uh, the studio space of this uh, big, uh, uh, the performing space of this uh, uh, big industrial building, which was also um, home for uh, visual artists and uh, um, organizations, uh, was shared by some of us. And it was a nice uh, way of, of working together with Miki and uh, uh, Rarita and Altart and some other organizations, we couldn't have uh, support, uh, we couldn't have uh, the chance to, uh, to fool the studio with programming uh, alone. So it was really good that we shared the space and we had a really nice dynamic of, of, uh, of organizing uh, events uh, and uh, and we also shared the space, a uh, smaller studio space with uh, uh, with the Centro Nacional al Dansului, which was a residency space called RAP. So it was a really good home for us for ten years. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I'm I would I wish we would have a picture of how is it looking now, uh, because um, all the walls are down and all, there is open office space for IT IT. <coughs> um, companies in this place and the irony of the of uh, of of it is that when the company moved uh, inside their new headquarters in uh, in uh, October they organized a big party and they said we moved to Fabrica de Pensole to be among the artists and we were like <laughs> you you just replaced us and we closed because of that uh, development and because of the 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 thing that uh, uh, this uh, new build the, the building is refurbished and it now it's working as IT offices and and there is this ir ironical or I don't know if it's ironic or it's arrogant or it's just 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 the way of uh, not uh, seeing reality <laughs> I don't know, but it was really they organized a party and they 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 are they are um, 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 how this uh, they, their communication was that we move to be closer to the artists. Anyhow, they are the, they are the, the new creative class, no? <laughs> um, so uh, shortly, this is the story of uh, of uh, how uh, how these years have been and why I'm saying I'm hibernating or the organization is hibernating. It's uh, uh, precisely because what Mickey said about the, f the, the funds and the fact that uh, uh, we uh, need to, the, the, I'm not sure if you know this, but there are not op no operational funds for cultural organizations in Romania. So that means you invent a project and then you apply and if you get some funds then you can apply for some more for, from somewhere else and then you can do the project. But otherwise for office, for, for uh, staff members, for, for uh, non-creative people like for communication and all that, you don't have funds. So that's why all the, all the projects uh, need to include all these costs. And when they are, these costs are not, uh, when your projects are not funded anymore or you, you are, it, it, the competition is very high, so you ne really need to reinvent all the time new things, even if uh, the old things are really good and working, but you still need to reinvent the new things so you can get some funds. And this is a sort of a, 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 a cycle which I opted out like three years ago and after finishing the tours of, of our last show uh, uh, which was parental control and went to Budapest and uh, went also to, to Lublin, uh, I, we decided to uh, sort of hibernate this cycle and uh, see if we can, um, um, if we will have the energy to uh, do something in the future out of this cycle and how is that possible. So that's why it's a hibernating process right now. Okay, can I go on? <coughs> okay, um, I am Petro Ionescu. I am part of the staff of uh, Rector. As Miki said, it's a new space, but for us it's not so new. 
uh, the venue opened in uh, March 2014 and um, the main idea of this, uh, we are also an NGO, we are project based, that means that we don't have constant f funds for our activity. But the main, uh, the main idea of this uh, venue was to uh, host and to produce uh, um, artistic projects uh, for uh, young artists. And uh, the main uh, uh, thing that we are interested in is uh, producing uh, contemporary Roma uh, and Romanian uh, dramaturgy. That means that we are working with uh, living uh, playwrights and writers only. Um, and uh, we have different platforms on which we work on and uh, is it okay? Oh. <coughs> um, and um, we have uh, a platform dedicated to freshly graduate students uh, in uh, different fields, uh, artistic fields, that means uh, scenography, uh, directing, playwriting, um, um, actors and uh, music and choreography and this is uh, dedicated only to, to freshly graduate students. We also have a residency for playwrights and we have another project dedicated to teenagers, it's called Fresh Start, oh, Teen Spirit, sorry, we have a lot of names so I'm not going to say them all. Uh, so Teen Spirit is for um, for uh, teenagers because it's a neglected uh, c category here in uh, in Romania. Um, on the other side, we also have a platform for kids. Uh, it's called Mini Reactor, <laughs> and it has a constant uh, season um, uh, each year. Now we are in our uh, sixth season already, also for um, the theater productions dedicated to uh, youngs and uh, adults, uh, and uh, also the the season for uh, for uh, kids. Um, we have a small studio. Uh, we also have a rehearsal room. Uh, we have a tiny um, office. Everything is happening in the same space. We have a, a beautiful yard that you might see it if you will come to, to see our theater productions uh, during the reshape um, or the tour, exactly. Um, <laughs> and um, what's uh, very important for us, it's uh, uh, this idea of maintaining this season that we have each year because we have a lot of production already since we are somehow obliged to produce a lot because every time we apply for funds uh, the production part is very important so so far in five years and a half we have 36 productions theater productions uh, for um, for youngs and uh, for um, uh, a mature audience and uh, 15 productions for kids, for children. And in this rhythm, it's very difficult to keep up with the production because during a year, for example, last year, 2018, we had seven theater productions, which is very heavy and um, the the problem is that we don't have enough space to uh, to rehearse so as i said we have a small studio we have another rehearsal room uh, which is uh, a lot smaller than the studio and the studio is small <laughs> it's uh, the capacity is around uh, 70 people in the audience um, and uh, yes it's we are over producing somehow it's uh, this rhythm of a factory somehow. And in the same time, we have a lot of collaborators. So in order to keep this, uh, to, to, to keep the, the people and the collaborators among us, we have to give them something to work and to have this season. And we have around three performances per week. 
but uh, it's very it's very difficult uh, financial wise it's very uh, difficult to to keep this of course we are multitasking that means that uh, for example i am a project coordinator i write ap applications but i'm also a stage dramaturg or a playwright or everything that it's needed uh, uh, given the circumstances and my uh, colleagues uh, Juana Mardare and Doru Talos, who are not here, they are the co-managers because they started, they initiated this whole project. They are actors, co-managers, financial directors, project coordinators, and of course they are also performing in the performances that they are involved. And we have technical team and they are also directors and drivers for the uh, tours that we have because this is another important thing in order to to get the funds you need to have mobility so that means that we need to go to other cities or towns and to perform there and starting this year we managed to have a project that it's um, very important to us because we managed to open uh, to have a season in Zalo, which is a close city to, to uh, Cluj, and there we don't, there, there's no theater there. Uh, there is a cultural house, something like that, but they don't have a theater in that, uh, in that city. So each Sunday we are going there as well and we perform in the morning uh, the performance, uh, performance for kids and uh, in the evening we have uh, uh, theater production for uh, adults and sometimes the teams are um, overlapping because the actors that are performing in the performances for children they are also performing in the night or they are doing the technical part for the performance that it's during the, the evening so yeah, uh, concerning the part of over -explo exploitation and stuff like that, we are nearly there or we are just near burnout, let's say, but in the same time we had uh, an important uh, growth and uh, it was very important for us to, to have this possibility to, to maintain the season and to have, uh, we have around 40 collaborators uh, and uh, we have like, I wouldn't say a constant team of artists, but somehow, somehow we have people that are closer to the space and they are involved in, uh, in more uh, activities. And we are around 10 people that are, are there all the time. And we are six people in the office. That means six people that are doing the bureaucratical work and the uh, financial reports and everything that it's needed for, for, uh, for our um, sustaining there. And we also pay rent for the venue that we are in. So that's another cost that it's very given the, the gentrification here in Cluj, I would say we are lucky because we are like almost center of the city, let's say, because when we opened in 2014, it wasn't really center, but now it seems like we're near the center of the city because it, it expands very, very much. We're pretty close to paintbrush factory as well, 15 minutes away or something like that. Yeah. And I think that would be it. Hello, I'm Vava, Vava Stefanescu. Uh, I, uh, I'm a choreographer and I'm running now the National Dance Center in Bucharest, uh, which I would say it's um, even my presence here, it's a curiosity because normally uh, I shouldn't be here as a representative of a state establishment. Actually, National Dance Center is a state uh, establishment who, which would, uh, would, have, would, would have all the means and all the resources to uh, fulfill a state mission, like in equivalence with a national theater. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> quite, quite opposite of it. Uh, the National Dance Center uh, was created after a model, uh, after the model of multi-art dance center that I created in 
2000 as an NGO and uh, it was created, the MUD Center was created because we need it. So the needing, uh, it's the main word and the mantra for all the years from then now, like 90 years, we functioned under the we need, what it's needed. So actually MUD Center set uh, the, the three components um, of um, activity, uh, education and artistic uh, formation and uh, production and uh, distribution of productions and mediatek and cross uh, interdisciplinary um, uh, well performance uh, whatever um, theory conference concerts and all this uh, uh, meeting uh, place with other domain of artistic arts uh, MUD Center lasts for three years only, and we uh, we said it's uh, a failure. It was very internal-driven um, structure, and with with no context at all, at all. Like nobody. I mean, there were people in the Ministry of Culture at that time who were, were very. Uh, amazed and uh, questioning why, how is that possible to sustain an NGO first with state money and um, how is that a theatre for dance? It's dance or theatre or are visual arts or what is it? And it stayed like that for 19 years, like this uh, confusion, uh, what is that? Uh, it's... Uh, a bird with uh, lion uh, legs and uh, wings. Uh, well, it's an anim it's a weird animal anyway. So um, three after three years of mud center, uh, the community gathered, and it was a, a big pressure in um, over the, the system. And we broke the system, and we oh, we uh, we found a little little uh, entrance, and we break it, and uh, we had like uh, two three thousand square meters in the building of National Theatre, right in middle of Bucharest, which we adapted and uh, constructed and um, put it as. Uh, in 2004 and five and six, uh, as National Dance Center. Well, I was talking about failure, not having like I have this experience like uh, 19 years ago. Uh, well, minus three, I had this uh, very um, strong uh, feeling that I, I I know what you are going through, and I know. Everybody here knows a little bit about that, about the sentiment of failure when you have to close a space, the only space that exists, and so on. But uh, actually, it was a success. The MUD Center was a success. It was uh, something that continued in this national, state, and uh, recognized structure. Uh, then, actually, uh, over the years, we, uh, we found out that um, the, the system didn't know how to treat us, how to deal with this uh, uh, structure, which uh, is not like other uh, performing arts structures under their um, hand, wing. Uh, and uh, because we don't have uh, a team of artists hired, we don't have... Uh, um, recurrent uh, program, like uh, not a season, but the uh, repertoire. <coughs> and we were like seven people working in the three uh, component. And also the word needing, I mean, uh, we had to, to, cover, uh, to cover all the needs in the domain of contemporary dance in 2004 which was no education for contemporary dance, no audience educated for contemporary dance and open and cross-domain uh, uh, or 
transversal uh, uh, showing or performing or whatever. No uh, theory, no critics, no uh, production money, no, uh, no so many gaps to cover. So we uh, lived and we uh, developed and we uh, uh, stated the things under this needing. And uh, at some point, uh, um, only, only lately, we uh, succeeded to get out of this needing and let the context work for us, in a way. And to live, make his work the context, the political context, the social social changes, the uh, whatever that uh, the artists, yeah, and um, it's uh, quite a good exercise for all workers in National Dance Center to live the the things happening uh, actually. In uh, 2011, uh, we, the building uh, of National Theatre uh, started to be renovated and we were kicked out without any solution, any uh, backing up uh, formula. So we received uh, three uh, rooms and uh, toilet uh, in, a, in another building and uh, we had no space at all. It's the moment when uh, we opened in uh, Fabrica de Pensule the residency program and um, uh, we, the, all the community that we uh, succeeded to, to have uh, around the center uh, in this kind of contamination ideas and uh, working system was uh, pulverized in, in everywhere. In 2013, we, uh, we succeeded to rent a space with the, state, with the same budget, like the budget went uh, down and down in the, all these years, like in this gap. Um, and um, we rented a space that uh, from a private person and uh, we adapted and uh, some of you know the, the place, uh, the rented space. And with the help of the owner, uh, now uh, slowly we have uh, a foyer for the uh, pub audience, uh, we have a new studio and we um, we tried to uh, we tried to uh, uh, get out of this uh, miserability of uh, this, this situation, and we uh, succeeded to have a lot of uh, other uh, means. Uh, like, uh, but it's easy when your salaries for for the uh, workers are uh, there every month. And uh, of course, you you fight for a budget, but you fight for uh, a small budget, actually. So we work only with the independent scene uh, in all the direction and uh, uh, registers of, um, and we have a we we worked all the time in partnership uh, philosophy. So we, do, we cannot be alone in this, yeah. And um, it's uh, when we set uh, in 2005 uh, the, the National Land Center, we were also a uh, funding uh, organization for the contemporary dance. The last uh, call for contemporary dance was in 2012 with a jump in 2016, mm -hmm. like it was a gap, and then we could find, found, uh, organize the call again, only in 2016 when uh, we got lucky. 2016 was a, a lucky uh, year. year. Uh, we received a building in the, in the center of Bucharest, an old building for, for the Senate of Communist Party. Uh, there are some images in this uh, moving images. But 
you can continue and uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. will second. And the uh, and the money to to remodelate and adapt for contemporary dance in all the three missions of the the center. Um, 13 million euro. It's a loan from the Development uh, Bank of Commission, European Commission. And the, the things are going slowly. A little bit back. Yeah. Ah, this it is, is it. Yeah, go, go, go. It's go. nice to see Hop. it with people. <laughs> yeah, imaginary. <laughs> it's a, it's a, can you hold it a little bit and make it still? Yeah, it's an important uh, moment, uh, like the the most marginal uh, domain of art in Romania, the, the contemporary dance and the contemporary art, I would say, uh, go back in the building that represents the, the biggest power. It's, it's in very interesting to, uh, to see that move. Uh, that we c we succeeded to make actually there was Ceausescu talking and now it's the uh, a pluralism of voices and and uh, a lot of uh, um, boiling ideas and uh, uh, are in the power and I would say like at this point of uh, the philosophy if you want but it's a lived philosophy. I'd say that the National Dance Center, it's the fantastic institution. Yes. Yeah, can be. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. and the, the project, I would uh, just say a little bit about the, the project. Uh, sure. It's the idea is to tear down the, the interior from top to bottom and to build inside like a core uh, the first level is uh, the laboratory, mm -hmm. like a, a small uh, stage, uh, very multifunctional, with a wall that uh, go back and forth, and yeah, and then it's an inter in, um, intermediate uh, level. You have two quite big studios, mm -hmm. and then you have the. Um, the showing, like the big hall, the big stage. For like how many seats? Two thousand, two hundred, two thousand, <laughs> two hundred forty, seventy, yeah. up to three uh, hundred. Mm. Uh, and then uh, Apollo and Bacchus, the third level, they are meeting up there because we have like uh, open patio with glass and uh, in the middle uh, with the trees and ta ta ta. You have the mediatek and the archives uh, and uh, then you have a bistro and then you have an open terrace. So it's the wonderful uh, image of uh, the center. It's quite big, uh, it's quite small for, for the entire activity. Actually we, we have uh, three missions. If you can. Three missions, yeah, I mentioned before. So we have to uh, make possible this recipient uh, to receive of um, artists and idea on every level. So uh, I think in 2023, we'll uh, invite you there. Thank you. I have a question for um, Petro and um, you. Uh, what are the topics of um, um, the performances that you are um, creating in your spaces? Okay, yeah, I was thinking uh, after that I didn't mention that. Um, usually we are um, socially involved and engaged. We are doing projects that uh, have this uh, vision towards uh, the com community that we are in, uh, social and political. We are uh, directed towards left, let's say. And uh, we have different projects and we approached uh, different topics. I would mention some of them. 
We had um, a project that was uh, about the transition period in Romania, what happened after the 90s, and the uh, wild capitalism that uh, came towards us. And in this project, we, we had uh, two theater productions. One was about Caritas. I don't know how many people are familiar with that. It's a um, pyramid scheme. And uh, it was this uh, game, let's say, that fooled a lot of people, uh, convincing them to um, deposit uh, a certain amount of money with the promise that they, they will get um, eight times back the, the, that amount. So it was... Uh, um, how do you say it in English? Arnak. Um, anyway, uh, it's a con artist, you know? So the, the, the person who... Scam, exactly, thank you. Um, and this lasted for about uh, three years. Yeah, Four million people were um, depositing money there and a lot of them uh, uh, were broke after it. They lost their houses or their savings that they made during uh, the communist, communist um, uh, period. Yeah. And that was one of the production we were documenting this uh, this whole uh, game, and the other one was about um, um, yoga uh, practitioners uh, that started in uh, also in the 90s, and in 2004 there was a huge scandal with this guru yoga guru who was uh, um, accused of um, uh, sexual assault and uh, pedophilia and uh, sexual practices that were not really. Um, I don't know, uh, approved uh, by the by the people back then, and um, there was a huge trial on this person. Uh, but in the same time, the yoga practitioners who didn't have anything to do with uh, this formation or this group, because it was a separate group that was practicing yoga in a certain way, they are also. Um, 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 the police came to their houses and it was uh, a big assault towards them and they didn't have anything to do with this guru, as I said. So it was a uh, um, stigma, let's say, on the yoga practitioners back then. So these are two of the projects. We also had a multi-annual project and we were focused on the, the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable groups. Uh, in Romania, because last year we had the centenary of Romania, the big union, and we focused on the, the categories uh, of, of people who were, let's say, uh, marginal somehow, and we made th uh, three theater productions. One about the condition of women in this uh, 100 years, one about the... Um, um, elderly people and another one about the sexual minorities because in Romania until 2001 it was illegal to have a different sexual orientation. So, yeah, yeah let's say we have this kind of topics in our productions. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask you, why do you tackle these kind of issues? Mm. Why, why do, do we? You, yeah, why do you prefer this and not the other? Oh, it it came with the artists that uh, approached the, uh, the space somehow and most of us are interested in political issues and in the same time there are things that affect us as well. I mean, we also work with personal stories. We have a lot of uh, theater productions that are made uh, with this uh, devised methods and that means that we, we work with personal stories and the actors are not uh, doing a part or a role. They are performing somehow their, their own stories. And in the same time, there are the directors that with, uh, we, with whom we, we collaborate. And sometimes uh, some, uh, the, the topics come with their proposal. I want to do performance about uh, Caritas, let's say. As I said, the, py uh, the pyramid scheme. And uh, it, it's somehow uh, 
um, suitable for us because Caritas started in Cluj. It was the big boom was here in Cluj, so it's uh, related to the community. So we are also trying to, to make performances that are important for, for Cluj and for what Cluj is, was or is becoming now. Baba, maybe you can also answer about um, the um, teams that uh, the artists uh, associated with the National Dance Center are uh, tackling in their performances. What uh, do you support as a, what kind of creations do you support I, as a I national um, I won't go, because we are uh, a recipient and we were thinking uh, very much in this, from this perspective. Uh, we don't do a curatorial, um, I don't know, we don't apply a curatorial vision on, on what's happening there. Um, actually, we, our productions are very few, <laughs> like uh, two in two years, or because we don't have budget for this, we, uh, we don't have a lot of budget, but there are a lot of um, uh, performances already done that we invite in a sort of recurrent uh, presentational mm -hmm. program. Um, and there is a, an option for, for ideas that um, move the perspective, that link uh, the artist with the, the social problem problems like Paul Dunca with, uh, with transgender problem, like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, or other programs. I mean, I don't know, there are different uh, artists there. They are quite recognized for, for instating um, this working with the audience mm -hmm. uh, process. Mm -hmm. um, about uh, uh, gypsies, Roma population, about uh, so we are very open to all ideas that, uh, that push a little bit the thinking, push a little bit the, the reaction of the audience. And I can say that the audience is quite... Um, um, engaged. Yeah, engaged and, and they know already that they come very open to what we present there. Mm. Because they are s those who are already converted? <laughs> you know that we are saying about I, ourselves I don't that know we are conversion, the same it's, uh, converted this, ones. Yeah, we, we can talk a lot. But um, I think they, are, they come with, uh, with no preconception and they, they come with the, um, with the willing of meeting new ideas, which is mm -hmm. the main thing. Um, and also we invite, uh, for instance, two days ago, from Friday to Sunday, we had uh, also in Sala Omnia, also in our rented space, um, transit, uh, days transit, uh, and they had like a marathon from uh, six in the evening till four o'clock in the morning, like a lot of artists talking about the future, about the, mm -hmm. the main problems and urgent problems of uh, climate change and so on. And um, it, it was an important moment. Mm -hmm. And it, it's quite, quite fluid, uh, people come and go, and this kind of uh, things we, uh, we invite mm -hmm. somehow in, in this. Uh, Manuel Pelmus, Alexandra Piric, mm -hmm. but also we uh, succeeded uh, now in last three years to crystallize more the, the three missions that I was talking and we instated the, the little school for dance, for contemporary dance, which is very transversal, it's not only, it's artistic education, it's not only dance. And then we opened physically the mediatek and the archives and it's amazing work that uh, was done there. Where, uh, it's um, a lot of documents and so on and uh, the, the recent history of contemporary dance in Romania. And um, 
um, well, the stage remains open till four o'clock in the morning for everybody because we started like that. I mean, mm -hmm, artists yeah. had the key of the, the space. Exactly. Yeah, this is very symbolic for um, um, your um, style of management of the institution. Um, there are some uh, keywords that were said till now, like uh, no context. So you created the context, we created the context. Um, broke the system, <laughs> then uh, overproduction also, and then failure. Uh, but uh, I would like us Let's to talk about success. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please. Yeah, I would like to move from these uh, keywords and to ask you how do you imagine an ideal period uh, of um, um, three years in the life of your organization institution, if you have the grants that you would like to have, what you would do? Um, it's very hard to imagine such a situation. <laughs> uh, from I know, but from from the point of view of a manage of management of managing an organization, it's like uh, uh, you always start from the funds and from the lack of the funds, and then you. Uh, uh, in, invite or in, get in or get involved with the projects which you can support. But it's like it's your responsibility not to dream and not to let. Well, like the artists would dream, but for for my from my point of view, if the artist is dreaming, and then I will uh, say uh, super nice, but I cannot support this because I know that I will not have the funds. It's uh, um, so. But now. <laughs> three years of um, the funding so what you would do <laughs> I would uh, uh, um, uh, make space for new work of international artists in residences uh, like if, if there is a space to to run and if there is money uh, I would invite uh, other people to think in that space so I would know more about my context through their eyes and I would curate the artists who are uh, involved in this but I would like Im to invite a lot of people to look at our context with their eyes and their cultural background I think it's a, um, I think mobility of the artists is uh, in the independent context because uh, you know if we're talking about mobility of the artists in the performing arts directors are moving a lot they are directing in this place and that place and they are invited into a lot of places but uh, like uh, the choreographers are less moving less uh, actors are moving less so it's uh, if we if we create if we create a context in the independent sector which is about a lot of mobility and a lot of meetings like this then it's nice. I was thinking that imagining an ideal phase in our organization, it's partly painful and partly needed because this is what somehow keeps us doing what we do. So we need um, this uh, future plan that uh, we will have at some point uh, more stability. And I think one of the most important things that we would do is to hire the people that are working constantly there because no one is hired. We are uh, having uh, short period contracts and most of them are um, like contracts for, for artists or for um, doing certain services. But not having people uh, employed means that there's also a lack of uh, social uh, measures and uh, social benefits for us. We are independent, but this word independent, it's not the best, I think, for us. We are depending on a lot of things, actually. So it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, weird to call ourself, ourselves uh, uh, independent. So yeah, I think one of the, the, the most important thing is to, to hire the people and uh, then I think we would ease this rhythm of production because we, are, we wouldn't have this uh, uh, rush and this um, overlapping uh, uh, production rhythm somehow. And 
I don't know, we are also thinking about expanding somehow because our studio is, as I said, pretty small and we are forced somehow to limit our artistic uh, vision and concept. We have this given space and we have to adapt to it. If we want to do bigger production or if, if we have an idea for a bigger scenography, it's impossible to do it. Of course, it's not the, m the main thing in, in producing theater shows, but you get bored <laughs> at some point. The question is, what you would do, well, the ideal situation for your space and the institution, if the next okay. three years will be funded not, not as for you me, wish. Because if the center would have yeah. uh, the money and the, the space and uh, the idea of situation, I would be very far away, <laughs> finally. And um, probably I would ask uh, for, uh, I would apply to the center to, for the production. <laughs> um, for your own production. But uh, yeah, I would instantly open, like at least in Romania, five eco artistic centers, mm -hmm. ecological artistic, in, not in the city. It's not in the, like I would, like, not like I, uh, I was thinking like five years ago, uh, I imagining and it was ideal to open uh, choreographic centers in big cities, university cities. But now I think uh, it's important to have like a ec ecological platform to meet for artists and organizers as well. And probably this I would do, like more uh, in healing uh, and um, raising artistically this kind of... Uh yeah, okay. I think. Yeah. So uh, you said, um, the three of you, your uh, needs for your organization, but what would be the common needs of the uh, scene, of the independent scene? Uh, operational funds. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's uh, the stage of development as we as we are speaking. Which is the next stage? The next stage is that people and uh, I think Petro was saying the same. The people are not um, uh, uh, working uh, on a project because they also need to pay, pay their salary. They are working on a project because they are paid to think about the projects and they are paid to develop new projects. And it's the, the, the basic, like the office, the, uh, your salaries and, and all, uh, all the basic operational funds are covered because of what all these people showed before. So it's like, uh, it's not uh, uh, um, um, uh, carte blanche because people are are uh, they demonstrated uh, like in, in the, the independent scene in Romania especially in performing arts demonstrated that they, they are flexible and they have really good ideas and they can work from morning till evening and they come up with new projects and new ideas and they are super good so let's support them by offering a platform like a, of operational funds and then you work from there. So you can, you, because like for our, our organization, for example, is a two member organization, which are, were volunteering all the time in these 15 years. That's not sustainable. That's auto exploitation. It's not sustainable. So if, if there are small organizations, it's really hard to make the next step of hiring someone who is good at communication or hiring someone else who is good at marketing or hiring someone who is good at fundraising, for example, like fundraising manager. I don't know how many uh, NGOs have fundraising manager, which is like the basic thing, but we cannot aff aff uh, afford a fundraising manager so we could uh, 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 go and find sponsors for our projects. So these kind of operational funds which would cover the ba basic stuff and that would make the next level for the independent scene to really work on their projects and not managing, not only the management behind it. I would add 
the need of a, a status for status, sorry, for the um, independent cultural worker and for the independent artists because we don't have this in Romania. And as I said, we are the um, um, there's the director of the National Theatre in Bucharest and also the the president of Uniter. That means the artist the theatre. Um, Makers Union, and he's calling the independent artists working in the theater the unemployed, because we don't exist somehow. Uh, in we are the unemployed, and uh, uh, not having this status, and um, um, regulated by the by the law and uh, by the government, we. If we don't have a project, then we don't exist. We don't have medical assurance. We don't have uh, the chômage. Um, how do you call it? Uh, the unemployment benefit. Yeah, the, the financial, uh, social uh, help. We don't have anything. So when you don't have a project, you just you don't. You, you're not there. You, you you're not figuring anywhere. So I think it's very important to, to d d develop this, this part of legalizing somehow our, our status because we are doing uh, an important part uh, that the, the institutionalized uh, theaters are not doing. They are not involved socially as much as we are. They are just uh, checking their... Uh, repertoire and their productions and their activity. There are a few theaters, state theaters in Romania that have a coherent program and a coherent concept of their work. Uh, the theater from Piatra Neamț, where is Janina Carbunaru, she's a, direct, a manager there, and um, an exception, yeah, <laughs> somehow. And uh, there are 50 three or 57 theaters in Romania, if we count the new ones in Calarash, uh, 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 which... Yeah, 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 yeah. That, but with, with, with the coherent program? More coherent, let's say, than the others. Well. We wish them luck. But <laughs> I, I, I can add something to the question before. Yes, 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 yes. please. Uh, you have to answer. If okay. we, uh, if we'd, uh, we would live in a in a ideal context with everything, we need it. We would need to find another fight <laughs> for. <laughs> Yes, and I, ha I have a proposal. And I wonder uh, who, what would be that, because, yeah, the, there are these uh, syndical or state um, uh, problems to set, these uh, managing uh, competences to develop, uh, but mainly it's on based, in my view, it's based on, um, it's not the money. Uh, the problem necessarily it's the understanding it's the cultural the, the culture the the open mind of the one in the power the ones in the power because the new that like the we changed like uh, like maybe 19 ministers of culture and the last one started with the uh, exchange office and business. I mean, the, the last one installed to 10 days ago. And uh, he opened like a sort of television uh, station in somewhere in Romania. So this is the Minister of Culture and uh, if we had problems to, di to enter a dialogue with the, the authorities until now, uh, I wonder how we can continue to, uh, or how it's possible to have a, a dialogue on the same understanding of notions. Uh, 
And uh, if this happens with us, I imagine how this works in smaller cities with the, the city, with the mayors and with the, uh, with the structures that uh, authorities that are not so, um, I don't know, uh, trained in, uh, in having artists with proposal with uh, challenges that artists are putting on the table. So, uh, if uh, seven years ago um, I, we heard, like really heard, uh, a minister of culture saying uh, uh, what, they are moving their legs and we need to pay them for that? Uh, this... Uh, <laughs> No, it wasn't then, and it will be not as long as we don't train uh, the society to understand, to look at each other, to uh, to to enter the dialogue. I mean, uh, these conversations are very good. I mean, these dialogues, these reshape things, these all all conferences. But I I have the feeling of no of endless discussions with ourselves. And uh, I think we do nothing for the a common, common understanding, like basic things. Basic things. Like in order to have a, a status for an independent artist, you have, I mean, you need to know a little bit what he's doing or she's doing or they, do, they are doing. Um, uh, I want to um, um, uh, connect to what uh, you said, Vava, about this and uh, uh, about the feeling that uh, uh, we need to pick up a new fight. Uh, uh, but I think it's not a new fight and it's, it's an ongoing fight. And um, uh, yes, we changed uh, 19 ministers of culture uh, and we started if those who had the chance uh, uh, started to reintroduce themselves, especially in contemporary dance, again, you know, I'm doing contemporary dance. Contemporary dance is, and then you make a definition, and you do it with the, all the ministers and all the, all the people in the ministry, within the ministry, because you need to explain all that. But my, I have a feeling that we have a, I, I, do, I, I think I said that before in another, in another panel. But we have uh, the, those who are in the field for a longer time. We have somehow the responsibility to share our knowledge to those who are starting this fight right now. And this is something which, is, which needs to uh, have more attention in a way from our side to, to, to share our know-how especially on this topic, not only the content and the professional stuff and the management stuff, but also this topic of how to deal with a mayor whose only problem is the, the, the I don't know, who's not interested in culture at all. How to deal with a local council who has no interest in what you are doing. So how to step out of this bubble of ours when we are speaking the same language and we, we can talk for hours about the same problems in different countries but the same issues with, uh, with uh, independent scene and with artists, uh, emerging artists and, and uh, stages, organizations in different uh, development stage. But um, it's, it's, this is what I... Uh, I uh, feel a, a lack of, in a way, that uh, uh, was, uh, l me, for example, I'm very tired already of this ongoing fight and I don't want to fight anymore, but I have a lot of knowledge. Uh, and some people have the energy to fight, but don't have the knowledge. So how to, how to connect this, these two things? What is the format? What is this uh, uh, format of... of, uh, of uh, of sharing this know-how in a way, so so we will have it already. And if, when they will get tired, they are they have a lot of energy, but they will get tired in uh, ten years, and and then new ones are coming, and that's super nice, super good that the uh, uh, people are in getting involved in the cultural scene and the young people are coming in. It's the way life is, yes. But let's transfer. How to transfer? This is a. a, a, a 
for me it's a, a question that it's uh, working. How to transfer knowledge, know-how, on how to deal with all these fights, how to deal with, and also with the audience, because the audience, our audience is live audience, that means it's changing. It's like, it's a, it's a new audience coming, younger people are coming to the theater or not coming to the theater or dance because they don't know how. So we need to train and, and develop programs of education for the public, also for the politicians, but also for our public. So they will understand or they will get closer to the art in this way. How? That. Um, I have uh, one more question for you, and then uh, I will um, we will open the session for um, the questions. Um, I totally agree with uh, your vision about transmission, and uh, this is really very important because otherwise nothing will be reshaped. <laughs> Uh, and about uh, a new fight, um, in my vision there is already one <laughs> and uh, my question is how do you respond to the more and more uh, large trend of the entrepreneurialization of culture, you that you have a vision of uh, culture as a social tool? Uh, have uh, this vision? Can I answer? I don't know. When, when you put the the the, uh, the other one question, like the ideal situation, I, uh, my first thought was, like to to let uh, the business uh, take over. Explain <laughs> more, please. Like very challenging, um, but now it. Uh, you are confused. Yeah, <laughs> um, because uh, for I mean from. This uh, position we have uh, as National Dance Center, as a state institution, as uh, this is uh, somehow to quit and to transform and to reshape is, um, um, I mean, it's the, the key uh, of continuation, mm -hmm. of continuity, mm -hmm. like the, uh, the possibility to, to leave it open within these uh, thin w walls, mm -hmm. like the, the structure, but to, uh, to make it that way that can take any shape, any, uh, that respond and enter in dialogue with the, with the artists, which are the... And what yeah. is the business in this? No, no, it's not a business, it's not a business. <laughs> But uh, I think, um, I don't know, it's, a, it's very odd because we need to continue like that because once we, uh, we drop it, it's like uh, we did it for nothing. Like uh, the, the state didn't have, has, have, have to, how it's correctly, uh, to recognize this kind of organizational non non-profit, non, uh, has to admit and to work with it. I mean, I wouldn't quit uh, this mm -hmm. because there is a lot of, um, and it's a conflict in, in I mean, going to, to a question, it's a conflict between this state uh, budgetary, uh, give me, give me, situation and the entrepreneurial which is uh, the National Dance Center is full of entrepreneurs actually independent little groups that they are trying to do something and they organize themselves as they can do they do themselves uh, recognize uh, them as entrepreneurs culture entrepreneurs I don't uh, I don't know if but they are in a way I mean, they are, in a way, because they find a lot of money, uh, a lot. I mean, they, they find money, they, they struggle to, to organize and to do things and to install things. And this is, I mean, it's not... Uh, and I was just thinking that I don't see um, um, a threat in the uh, commercialization of 
art uh, in because I think there is room for us under the sun so there there are art forms which can be commercialized and we'll have the public for that who will pay for that but I don't I don't see that why is that a problem I only see that from my point of view I'm I will probably do art or com contribute or manage art which is not that type but I think that's fine I mean well they are different forms and I don't feel threatened by those forms who, who can be commercialized and can live on their um, um, uh, of their income I'm not usually serving it as a public I don't go to the, this type of event but that's my choice and I think if we have choices that's fine I would add something um, I think one of the the main issues is the idea of compromise how much do you compromise what's the level of compromise when you are transforming culture into business and also the impact that it has on the other or on the others um, uh, the other um, cultural NGOs smaller than you are or uh, than what you are becoming and it's it's very difficult because each city or each country has its own dynamics and Cluj is very particular uh, in that case because having a dynamic cultural life uh, comes with this kind of compromise because you are killing somehow the, the small NGOs or you are producing something that will come back at you in a bad way, in a violent way, producing gentrification and uh, also um, having this um, uh, greedy way of uh, accumulating the cultural capital. And th this is what is happening in, at the city hall somehow. Because we as an NGO, we are important, let's say, for the cultural life. We are part of the statistics of this city. We are dynamic, we are young and we are creative. But this doesn't reflect the, f the, the financial funds that we are receiving from the city hall. And somehow they are building this, uh, this uh, image. They have uh, capi capitalizing their cultural image on us, but we are still precarious. So how can, what, what how is this success for whom? And we have a success story so far as, uh, as NGO. Reactor is a success, but it's not. We are just surviving still in this context because Cluj is becoming more and more expensive. And the gentrification, as we know, has also uh, uh, an effect on, on, uh, on the cultural life, or sometimes the artists are to blame for gentrification. But it's not always the case, it's just, I don't know, somehow we are unaware of what we are producing. Uh, what, what's the impact of our activity? Thank you very much. Um, and <laughs> already questions? Hello. Um, I have a question for all of you, but I think that's... Um, the best point actually uh, drawing from what Petro said I think that's your okay thank you um, I would like to know uh, how do you engage with your local communities are different as different organizations and also I was curious to know uh, how you engage with one another I was part of a conversation in 2016 when Clues was preparing the bid book for the European capital of culture and it was really fascinating to see some of the flagship projects that you were proposing back then that were based on collaboration between the state and smaller NGOs and arts organizations. And I was wondering whether you have found a way to do that regardless of the outcome of the, of the ECOC and what is the, the things that you can share with us about that?
difficult question. Uh, how we? I just tried to repeat the question because uh, I thought it was for them, and uh, I wasn't that attentive. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, how um, this idea of collaboration from the bit book? It's happening now. In a way, this is the question. Um, we, uh, as the factory, together, for example, we always collaborated with the other partners, um, smaller or bigger than us. And uh, well, I think a nice project that we succeeded to do, uh, apart this um, uh, bit book, <laughs> was a, a website, a common website called Theatre in Cluj, and uh, it was uh, the idea, which is dying now, yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it was a platform for the common program of uh, Theatre in Cluj, also independent, but also uh, from um, the state uh, institutions. And uh, we did this after a project um, that um, was um, uh, managed by the factory together with Reactor, uh, another uh, space called Zug, um, and uh, we, uh, yeah, and um, uh, we had the moment of reflection together, uh, and uh, we gave feedback on our audiences, and uh, we saw what uh, were our needs, and um, we tried together to to find solutions to this. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea was to develop the audience of the free spaces at the beginning, but uh, uh, we realized that it, it's more important to also be open to the public of the national institutions. Um, this is uh, this is very clear as a, uh, I can point this project. Uh, you said, Patarut. Uh, maybe you can speak about this because you collaborated with Altart for a performance. Yes, we, we, but I don't know if that's the question. I, I, I'm, I will, I will refer to your first question on how do we engage with the, with the community and the audience, and um, on most of our projects we are trying to have uh, some workshops in which we are talking. Um, with um, representative uh, group, uh, groups of people for, uh, what f for our topic, let's say. As I said, when we have uh, a production for teenagers, then we are trying to make some workshops and some sessions with them and trying to approach them and talk with them and to see their interests. And also, uh, since um, you mentioned Patarut, uh, Patarut is the... Um, um, it's a community uh, of Roma people and it's near the um, airport and this is where the garbage dump is. So this community was uh, evacuated for the last 50 years there and especially poor people and Roma people. They were evacuated from their social houses and they are living near the garbage dump and you can imagine their situation there. There aren't uh, let's say properly houses there. The, 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 it's it's a very um, I don't know doomed community somehow. Uh, and for this project, uh, we were um, doing this uh, this performance, theater performance, uh, starting from this very clear situation here in Cluj, but we were also interested in the forced uh, evacuations in Romania because Cluj is not the only city that is uh, um, having this kind of actions. There are evacuations in Bucharest as well and uh, in other cities as well, or building um, um, walls to separate the Roma community, the ghettos, from the rest of the community. Uh, this is happening in Baia Mare. And um, we were also um, interest, uh, interested in going there in the community and to talk to the people there. And we had uh, a couple of meetings there in Patarut. And it was very important to, for us to know how to represent them because none of the team, none of us in the, in the artistic team uh, was uh, Roma or uh, uh, was dealing with this kind of situation 
being uh, evicted. So it's, it was very important to, to have this, to, to, to talk with them. Of course, we didn't manage to have um, as much people as we wanted uh, in our interviews and in our uh, talks with them, but it was still uh, uh, an experience to go there and to see how those people are living. And there were a lot of kids approaching us as well and talking to us. So we basically did this research there and also reading a lot of materials regarding uh, evictions and the laws also, because there are some European laws concerning evictions. For instance, you're not allowed to evict people during winter. And this is what happened in Cluj, actually. People were evicted in December uh, 2011. In, it was 17th of December when they were evicted. In, well, it was five in the morning when this happened. So it's, it's illegal, it's normally it's illegal, but they, they still did it. So yeah, this is a very particular project. And also we, have, we, we always try to have this focus on the audiences and uh, having Q&As after each performance, but also have, um, we have this uh, program called Framework. And this uh, is um, dedicated to, um, let's say, more engaged uh, you know, spectators that want to have debates after the performance or after the, each activity that we have in a certain project. And they are, um, they gather in, uh, in one of our um, rehearsing rooms and they are uh, doing this, uh, let's say, critical debate and uh, having this uh, social um, uh, input as well about uh, uh, what we are doing there. And there's another particular performance where we have, um, I, I guess you'll see it because it's included in this program. It's called the um, um, Ballads of Memory Ballads. And here we have a non-professional uh, actress. She's uh, 69 years old and she's performing because the, 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 perfor the performance is uh, about um, what does it mean to retire, what was uh, uh, their, the, the experience of uh, elderly people uh, during the transition um, um, period and how is it in the present, how the elderly people are seen these days because it's a very uh, social um, invisible, socially invisible category in Romania. Another question? Hello. Um, uh, I'm going to try to formulate this. It's not very clear in my mind, but I, I guess what I want to, uh, the direction that I want to to go to, or what I w would like to hear from you, is how in, uh, you've been dressing this kind of picture of, uh, um, of your local positioning and, and how you see yourself in, in a local environment. And, and I wonder um, how you would see yourself in, on a larger kind of scale. Um, I know that uh, all of you, or, or, or most of you, uh, work internationally um, and, and are very much connected internationally. So, so I wonder what you know, your own vision of your own place in that environment is. Um, a while ago, uh, um, um, somebody who is uh, um, highly placed in a French institution told me that there is no such thing as Eastern Europe anymore, so I wonder how you feel about that and, and whether that's a reality that you uh, can acknowledge, that 89 brought the end of history somehow to all of us. Now we are all one happy family, and, and so, um, is that something that you can relate to? And, and how is your work also in terms of uh, not just its political impact, but, but also uh, in terms of the, the artistic and, and aesthetic uh, value of it seen in this larger environment? And then perhaps connected to that, uh, I very much relate to what you were saying, Kinga, about, um, about transmission uh, and how transmission can happen from one generation of a, of a burnt out <laughs> activist to another. Um, and then I wonder how we can also see that in a larger scale and how the, 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 the heritage of, of your activism can be somehow transferred to other 
situations as well. And how can we, uh, who are actually now, we in sitting, from, I can speak for myself, sitting in Western Europe in a situation of relative luxury, but facing a situation that, you know, is soon to become what, what you have already been through, how can we learn from your activism? How can we do this transmission also, not just generationally, but from one region to another? task. Who wants to take it from We stay me? here till six o'clock? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Who wants to take it? <laughs> well, I think there are, th there, there are three questions here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we are connected. Uh, we tried to enter different uh, networks, um, but actually we... Um, networks like airwaves, like uh, dance roads till uh, two years ago, I think, started, uh, stopped. Um, I don't know, well, um, but uh, may basically, um, we considered our structure as a recipient, like a, like a meeting point of, um, like it's a main characteristic. So artists are more connected than the institution, somehow. So this is the advantage of uh, being a fantastic institution because they, uh, uh, if the artists are connected, uh, the institution can work for them. They, they can, uh, uh, um, the institution adapt the possibilities to help them to, to support and to, to go further. There's less, uh, maybe it's less, uh, how you call that, a desiderate uh, of institutional point, from institutional point of view, like uh, we want to be recognized or connected or work with, uh, da, da, da. Uh, then, uh, I mean, it's not that powerful. Of course, we try, but it's more uh, letting the artist uh, or helping the artist, uh, supporting the artist to have this mobility uh, ground and playground sometimes, and made make a uh, artist because it's such a big difference between them. I mean, they they work very different on different, uh, um, and they connect with different with similar islands. Uh, so. Um, uh, it's more a duty for us to to let uh, to make this happen more than uh, the institution to get something out of it. But we can uh, and then we try uh, more and more to let more the audience to know what happens abroad. I mean, this is the effort that we do like to cultivate or to open mind the uh, the mind of an our audience. And the other question was, so this was the connection with the... Uh, it was about recipients, your uh, competence and your knowledge. Uh, about trans transmission. I'm not a good uh, person to say. I mean, to answer to this, because I believe there is no transmission. I mean, it's like in dance, uh, where you don't have a... I mean, it's like in dance when you, uh, you... You can... I cannot teach you to dance. I can transmit some things that you work with, and it's yours. It's not mine. It's not something that you can use. I mean, you can use it for, for the starting point, but then it's a guidance, it's a, yeah. But then you are the one who do things. And the context will be very different. I mean, this is a big question for me. 
because we prepare kids for a future that we don't know. The future, it's, we can look at it, but it's not quite uh, clear. So, uh, I, th I know that uh, MAD, uh, multi Dance Center experience, it's very similar what they are doing, uh, what they are experiencing right now, or with Fabrica de Pensole experience, but uh, I, I don't think this can be uh, transmitted. Be aware, there will come a moment of failure. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't believe it, so I'm not a good uh, answerer to this question. Maybe it's a learning process together with yeah. the other generation, maybe. But your question was also about what can you learn from us? I think there's nothing to le learn. <laughs> don't agree. <laughs> It's, not, it's n nothing that you can reproduce elsewhere. This is what I'm trying to say. It's very different. Each context is so different. And you cannot have a recipe. You can take that and that and it will have the same outcome. It's very difficult. And I'm going back to your question about there's no more uh, Eastern Europe. This is like uh, ignoring history. I know we have a short memory, but you cannot erase this like that. And it's not the fact that we have a common background, because somehow we do have it. And it's also this... Um, geographically, we share somehow some things. I don't believe in borders, nations, stuff like that. But we do have common history till one some point and that's it and not saying there's no more eastern europe it's as i said ignoring history and ignoring the the political factors that get us here somehow and about your uh, your first question the question was about the uh, the international context I would say that for us, Rector, we are not so internationally, let's say. We went to Seged uh, to a festival, Tealter, this summer, and that's it. And we are going uh, in Budapest at uh, Duna, uh, Duna, Duna part, uh, with a performance there. And that's it for our international context. But we do have collaborations with um, different NGOs, and we have uh, we we managed to do that uh, uh, through uh, ITM. So we have this um, exchange uh, programs. We hosted some performances here. Uh, we have good connections uh, in Maribor with uh, Moment. I don't know if you're familiar. Anyway, they are small as us, so that may, it's a different scale. And somehow I, I think that we are relevant for our context, for the national and uh, local context, but internationally, I don't think we have the recipes for doing international performances yet. I, I, I think there's very specific somehow, and uh, we have performances with a lot of texts, and uh, it's difficult to 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 get it somewhere else somehow, or it's difficult to follow. I don't know, it's, uh, it's something that we are still trying to reach, but it's one of our purposes as well, but it's not the main purpose. We, uh, as I said, we are relevant here and it's important to be relevant in your community. Hi. <coughs> uh, I was uh, wondering, as a as a Western European, being part of your community somehow since two three years, uh, I was wondering about the the impression that some Western European people have coming here in Romania and saying, "Yeah, in Western Europe, it's kind of luxury," and uh, and that's true in a way. And in another way, I it makes me wonder how uh, the, the Eastern Europe can be used 
in Western Europe to make us feel in Western Europe in this kind of luxury. And I've always been uh, amazed by the fact that I've seen many West, uh, Eastern productions are, uh, in the cinema uh, very much that are greeted with so, so, uh, so amazingly by Western Europe because Eastern people are criticizing their own culture and uh, countries. And I was wondering if there were some productions, uh, Romanian productions, making uh, about this fact that in fact in Romania remains something that that is not so much contaminated by neo neoliberalism, which we haven't talked about here, because reshaping, for me, the world is being reshaped by neoliberalism since some decades, and the way we, uh, you, the reshape that you're talking about is like a fight against the, the reshape by neoliberalism, and you have to reshape permanently because you fight like the monster coming. And my, uh, and I feel that in, here in Romania, you, you have, a, it's a bit late, yeah, it's a bit late and it's good f from this point of view. And I was wondering if there were some productions talking about this advantage of Eastern Europe uh, about this small late to, to talk about it in a positive way and, and to get out of the way Western Europe uh, um, asks for Eastern artists to talk about how is it bad to be in Eastern Europe because in Western Europe it's so cool. I mean, I, I was about to say the, uh, before, uh, depends, uh, we don't have production, we are representative only for local, uh, na, na, na. depends who is looking at it. No, 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 no. I mean, it's what you believe. <laughs> but I think who's looking at it? I mean, if you are looking at that, uh, you can understand. Yeah. But it's true that it was, um, well, depends who, with whom you were talking. Because it, it was a period of time when the, the productions were very sexy for the West. Uh, and they were like uh, the years 2000, 2000 maybe seven, eight. Um, there were artists that uh, revisited uh, the, the values uh, that we are, we, we have here, and they, they put, the, like I'm, I'm thinking about uh, High Styles in Amnesia Sky, uh, is the first who comes and who was invited in Berlin, in Tanztag, in Tralala, uh, Manuel Pelmuz, uh, and so on, uh, who were, and now we, we have a lot of productions, like look at Alexandra Piric, that uh, it's uh, yesterday, before yesterday, she came from Portugal, and it's a co-production, and, and uh, well, there is no, um, I think, uh, it's, it's a tricky thing here. I mean, economics has to deal with that. I mean, it's obvious that Eastern European countries are poor and their, their economics, it's, it's a complex of economy. It's, uh, it's a long discussion, I think. And on the other hand, this uh, kind of uh, attitude uh, in the West that we um, it's a luxury and ta ta ta. I participated, I think, uh, 15 years ago, in uh, in debates or in uh, in France, and they they told me because I was presenting what uh, structures exist and ta 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 and how's the funding for contemporary dance and for contemporary art and so on. And 15 years ago, it was the same problem. What's uh, the difference and what's the and I learned, I mean, they said, at least you uh, have the opportunity to set it right. Yeah, now, uh, well, someone from France told me, 
I wonder if he wasn't from Onda, who said, told me that uh, in Montpellier uh, meeting with politics uh, for dance, cultural politics, policies for dance. Uh, and um, uh, she said, at least you can set it, put the ground for like very healthy and as you like for that. And this is a luxury. And this is a luxury because it's harder to break a system. I, I think you are in a difficult prob uh, situation. The, the, the people I mean, in the West, I think it's harder to break uh, some uh, mentalities. Uh, huh? And for us, it's hard to, um, to fight with chimeras, to fight with the idea that the, um, the Americans are coming or that uh, we will find, uh, uh, mm. I don't know, what kind of treasure. Mm. Sorry. Uh, um, the last question, maybe for her, because, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone told me that we have to. Um, I just wanted to add on that. Uh, coming from Greece, I understand perfectly what you're saying. The only thing that makes me feel a little bit uh, weird about it is that I feel that we have to break another system, which is exactly the system that uh, grows out of being poor for many years, out of not trusting each other, and not being able to collaborate unless we have someone coming from the West to show us the way to do that and to give us some money. So I think there is a lot of systems and a lot of different layers depending on the context. Thank you. And you were right. I mean, I think you know, when this is the kind of dialogue that uh, affects actually uh, because uh, if on the other on one hand you have the um, the material thing, then the, the the recognition, the mentality yeah, that uh, you are not recognized in your country if uh, if someone from west uh, comes and say. Uh, you're good, and uh, like it's uh, give you the the label or the uh, and uh, the recognition. And on the other hand, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, exchanges that really happens. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, but this is the mobility and the and it's a long discussion with economics. I mean, I believe in economy. That's why I mean, let business do. Christina, should we finish? Yeah. Thank you for coming and <laughs> so yeah, let's meet afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we are going to visit uh, uh, Reactor's place uh, tomorrow and a lot of other new interesting places and people tomorrow at the performing arts tour. So uh, I expect you to, not I don't expect, but if you want to join, it's, uh, uh, we start at 10 at Belvedere. Thank you for your attention and thank you for the speakers. Um, thank you for the invitation. <laughs>